These are soft robots. Their structural components are built not out of metal or wood, but flexible materials like plastic tubing. But how do they work? And why would you want a soft robot in the first place? This video was sponsored by KiwiCo. Check out their robots at the end of the show. So I came up to Stanford to meet Zach Hammond and his soft robot. How's it going? All right, you want to tip it? So is the idea that the robot could walk this way? Totally, yeah. So you, you can kind of chain these rolls together to kind of roll around in any environment. They call this punctuated rolling locomotion, wherein it's kind of stuck on a face until it tips over and now it's on a new face and it can then continue to move its uh, center of gravity. Once that center of gravity exits the support polygon or the, the base, then it, it tips over one of the edges of the, of the face. This is a different soft robot made out of flexible tubing. It was designed to mimic the way a turtle walks, where diagonally opposite legs move together. It's powered entirely by compressed air, and perhaps most impressive, it requires no electronics. All of the circuitry is pneumatic, and this means the robot can be used in places like mines where electronics could spark explosions, or in the strong magnetic fields around MRI machines. But why would you want a soft robot in the first place? One of the things that I like to do is just to take the robot and kind of like beat it up a little bit, show how it's compliant and compressive. Well, because they're safer. If you'd like to take a whack at it, you know, feel free. But I, I don't think this is your work. I don't want to break it, obviously. No, feel free, go for it. For operation around humans, there's not much damage a soft robot can do to you. I can stand on these? Yep. This is a pretty crazy compliant robot. Because the, the fundamental structure of this robot is compliant, there's only uh, some maximum force that it could ever exert on me. So it's, it's inherently safe to be operating around people. Could we make it fall and have me be inside it? Yeah, yeah, we could do that for sure. Just watch uh, your head. Yep, if I um, go over here. If you're there, yeah, we can do that. All right, let's try it. Here it comes. Well, that's not bad at all, is it? I can try another right. shape that's supposed to open up one of the faces so you can jump out of it quickly. Okay. I haven't tested it in a little while, so sure. I don't know how it's gonna go, but let's try this. There you go, that's their face right there to your right. And you can exit the truss from that face. Boom. Perfect. Just that easy. Did you build this by yourself? Me and one other grad student built this entire thing ourselves, <laughs> basically. And how long did it take? We did it in about a month, I want to say, like actually constructing everything. And was it tricky? I mean, were you sewing that stuff? Yep, we sewed this all ourselves. The main structural members of this robot are fabric tubes inflated with air. Yeah, so these red tubes are a nylon fabric, and then internally there is a polyethylene tube that provides the air tightness. The tubes are inflated to about six PSI above atmospheric, so it's almost one and a half atmospheres. Each tube passes through pairs of rollers connected to a motor. The rollers pinch the tube so it bends kind of like a pinched straw. And the rods, and then we have this like high friction material wrapped around the rods. And then that coupled with the fact that we have this pressurized tube that's kind of pushing the membrane of the tube into the rollers prevents us from slipping. By driving the motor, it changes the lengths of the tubes. Kind of like when a clown creates a twist in a balloon and then folds that balloon into a balloon animal. The difference between what the clown does and what we do is that there's a, some passage of air between adjacent segments of the tube so that as the robot drives around, we're not pressurizing the segments of the tube. This robot is made of four inflated tubes, each one connected to a pair of motors, forming triangular sides. We also think that they kind of look like sausage links when put together, which is why we've named these robots after different sausages. So this one's called Polish. That one over there is chorizo, there's a linguisa and a kielbasa over there somewhere. So what shape is the overall thing? It's an octahedron? Yeah, we call it an octahedron because if you drew lines between these kind of kinematic uh, joints here, it would create an octahedron shape. 
Driving the motors together allows the robot to dramatically change shape. It can get very tall or short and squat. But since the tubes themselves don't change in length, the overall perimeter of the robot, the length of all the edges combined, doesn't change. So the robot is considered isoparametric. How do you feel when you watch those Boston Dynamics videos? Oh, I love those videos, they're so cool. <laughs> the Boston Dynamics robots are kind of terrifying. Mm -hmm. Like, isn't the idea with soft robots to like convince people that robots are good and soft and <laughs> kind and friendly that's, and that's safe? That's definitely true, yeah. There are some things that you can do to rigid systems to make them feel like compliant systems based on how you're controlling the motors. But yeah, they're definitely, you know, heavy, expensive, and, and can uh, be dangerous if they're not used correctly. The hard robots we're used to are strong and precise. Their actions are accurate and repeatable, but they are also heavy and they can't really change their volume as dramatically. But this robot is still capable of carrying a heavy load. Uh, so I have a, a GUI in MATLAB that oh, nice. enables me to just put in the positions that I want the robots to move in inches and then send them out. There's some other functionality. I have some like stored uh, configurations to send to the robots. Soft robots also have the advantage of shape changing. They can become tall to go over obstacles or short to fit under obstructions. So if there's some rock that it didn't see, or that it wanted to roll over, it could simply do that and the compliance of the tubes would simply just bend around that disturbance. Do you imagine robots like this doing work in space? Oh yeah, definitely. So one of the nice things about these types of structures is that they can shrink down their volume very drastically. And because volume on rockets is such an expensive premium, um, being able to have a robot that can pack down small for transport is very valuable. So NASA was at one point looking into trust robots for exactly that reason. And they've contacted us since we've made this robot to explore different ideas for space exploration projects. So one of the things that they're thinking about doing is deploying robots underneath a sheet of ice. So they're gonna drill through this sheet of ice and then deposit a robot um, through what is a kind of a small diameter hole. And so if you can have a robot that can change its volume very drastically or be disassembled and then reassembled to form like a much larger structure, then you can have uh, large robots that are able to fit through these tight spaces and be deployed in kind of difficult to access areas. Is this a little bit like an octopus? Is that, is that how you could think of it? There, there is some connection there because they, they use their shape changing ability and their compliance to squeeze through tight passageways and then also to wrap their body around objects. So for example, they can open jars with their tentacles. And one of the things that we want to use this robot for is grasping and manipulating objects. This robot is even capable of picking objects up off the ground. We'll try that and see if it can grab it. Because of the compliance of the, the tubes, it has a natural ability to grasp and manipulate objects because a, as it does so, the tubes bend ever so slightly, which increases the contact area and distributes evenly the forces that are exerted on that object. So, I mean, is the biggest risk if it, if it pops? Yeah, that's a, that's a big risk. I mean, you obviously need the, the compressed air for your structure. And so if you have a leak... Oh! Then you don't have a robot, right? It's a pretty big drawback of soft robots. You know, some things that you could do to mitigate that would be to have on board a small compressor which uh, isn't there to provide power to the robot, but would help you maintain uh, pressure if there were any small leaks. When you tell someone you're working on a robot and they see this, does it defy expectations? Totally. Like they have no idea what it is I'm talking about until I show them like a video or a picture. I think most people's conception of uh, soft robots was really expanded by the movie Big Hero 6. And I think they did a great job in uh, kind of showcasing what a soft robot can do and why they're useful and kind of just popularizing the notion. It's really great to have compliance built into any mechanical system, especially as we want robots to work closer and closer with humans. So I think we'll definitely see more soft robots in the future. Hey, this video was sponsored by KiwiCo. And since I was up in the Bay Area, I got to visit KiwiCo headquarters, which was mostly empty because COVID. But I met with a few designers who make the awesome projects that come in KiwiCo crates. There you go. Oh boy! And I'm not gonna lie, it kind of seems like the best job. 
I was in awe of some of the ideas they have brought to life. Dude, that's cool. Look at that. <laughs> you know, KiwiCo offers eight subscription lines for kids of all ages, and everything you need comes right in the box, so that means no running out to the store. Each crate not only gets kids making and having fun, but also learning about STEAM concepts. KiwiCo believes that kids are often better at thinking big, and as a father of three kids, I know that to be true. If I can get them learning little things every day, that can all add up to a big perspective change in how they see the world. So for viewers of this video, KiwiCo is offering 50% off your first month of any crate. Just go to kiwico.com slash veritasium50. I will put that link down in the description. So I want to thank KiwiCo for sponsoring Veritasium, and I want to thank you for watching.